Hey friend, if you've ever wondered how to make sales using LinkedIn, this episode is for you. Today I'm chatting with Michelle J. Raymond. She tells the story of how she discovered the power of LinkedIn by being thrown in the deep end in a new sales job and having to find her own leads. And she was also looking for an efficient way to stay in touch with people around the country and around the world. And now she helps others do the same. Stick around to the end. There is so much gold in this episode. Welcome to Magnetic Pod. If you are looking to attract your soul clients while doing the work you love, this show is for you. Hi, I'm Olivia D'Souza. I'm a podcast manager and content repurposing specialist. The Magnetic Pod Show is about attracting your sole pod of clients through podcasting. It will also include things that can be applied to other areas of your marketing strategy too. Hit subscribe to join me in calling in the people we are here to help. Let's make a massive impact. I am here and I'm ready to be brave. Cannot miss me, I'll stand on every stage. I'm available. Hey friend, before we dive into today's episode, remember to hit subscribe so you don't miss any of the tips we share in Magnetic Pod on podcasting, lead generation, and business boosting ideas. And remember, if you have or you're thinking about starting a podcast, head over to my website at livymusicmedia.com forward slash freebies. I have loads and loads of free resources and templates that will help you get started. The link is in my show notes. Now, here's your show. Hello, Michelle. Welcome to Magnetic Pod. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to have this conversation today. Yeah, me too. I have seen you on LinkedIn for a while and see that you do some, you have, a, you have a podcast yourself and you do these events on on LinkedIn and you know all about LinkedIn and I just see huge opportunity with LinkedIn. So I'm very excited to, to learn from you. So I will introduce you for, before we dive in. <laughs> Okay, so Michelle is the founder and chief social strategist of the Good Trading Company, company or Co, what do I say? Co, yeah. Co. <laughs> I mean, it's both, right? It's one of those things that it's like the cool name for it, but the reality is it's a company. <laughs> okay. So the Good Trading Co. Uh, she's also an international best-selling author, which is a huge achievement, and member of the inaugural inaugural. There you go. Uh, LinkedIn Small Business Advisory Council for LinkedIn Pages, LinkedIn Strategist, and she's a LinkedIn trainer as well. She helps clients attract new opportunities to increase revenue, build a solid reputation and position for their brand for, and position their brand for success. Um, and her passion is to change the world by, by doing good business with good people, which I love. I love that because I've noticed that all the people I work with tend to be passionate people doing good in the world. I think that's why a lot of us go into business. So, all right. So tell me tell me more about that last line. I'm really interested in that actually. I was hoping you would say that because there is a backstory to it and you'll notice the word good keeps popping up, you know, good trading co, good business, good people. It's definitely something that came about because I had no intentions of ever setting up a business. I had to quit on the spot one night when the owner of the business that I worked for reneged on a $2 million deal blamed me, said it was my fault and pushed me under a bus, so to speak. Wow. I am not going to lie. I thought I was having a heart attack while I was listening to my client tell me what had just happened because I was blindsided. I mean, I had no idea whatsoever. And honestly, I've never felt my heart race as much. I was shattered because I knew the implications of what it would mean for their business. And I'd worked really hard to win this deal. And so there'd been a series of events at other previous roles, you know, not being appreciated or working, you know, crazy hours and not getting recognized or rewarded for that. So when I quit on the spot, I woke up the next day to complete silence. So I went from having 30 people report to me to silence. Weirdest feeling. It was March, 2020. So COVID then came lockdowns, then came winter and it was no fun. And I nearly exploded trying to come up with an idea on what I would do for my own business because I decided I wouldn't work for anyone else. And so luckily for me, I'd been using LinkedIn for around six or seven years at that time in what's called social selling. So using LinkedIn to generate leads and awareness and new sales for the businesses I worked for. And I reached out to someone that was a former competitor 
And I said to her, I can see you trying to do some stuff on LinkedIn. If you try this, this, and this, it'll really help you. And I am so grateful that the words she said to me were, Michelle, where did you learn all this stuff? I wish I could learn from you. And I was like, you know, the angels came, the light bulb went off. I was like, that was it. It was all along. And I'll tell you a funny thing. I wrote the training program, went back and she's like, oh, we're okay. But you know, I went to my next client and they said, can't you just do it for us? And I literally went, huh, you pay me to do LinkedIn for you. I didn't even know it was a job, which is showing my age. Um, but yeah, I had to laugh, but grateful now that I get to teach people and businesses how to really do the same thing that I know works so that they can, you know, basically stand out in a really crowded online world and generate new opportunities to grow. So yeah, that's my backstory. That's where the good comes from. (laughs) Wow. Gosh, that would be an awful feeling if you, so you were involved unbeknownst you didn't know but you were a part of this yeah so here's how it played out I spoke to the same customer who was very nervous about a delivery that was coming a couple of days later I spoke to her at four o'clock in the afternoon I got home from work that night I was driving into my driveway it's about seven o'clock at night just about to go in thinking oh my god I'm so tired I can't wait to have dinner you know all those kind of things and she called and I was like oh it's important I better take it And then I could hear in her voice straight away that something had happened. And I was thinking, what the hell's happened in two hours? Like, you know, Mm. like everything on my side's under control. And yeah, she said to me, Michelle, what's going on with my order? And in my head, I'm thinking two hours ago, I told you everything's under control. Like, you know, what's going on? And it took me a little while to catch up to match. I could hear the distress on her side. And then it took me a while and then my world just started to spin and then I started to catch up and then, yeah, it was just craziness. I never want to experience that again in my life. I never want to deal with people that don't hold their word, that don't have their integrity in business. It's really important to me that people do what they say they're going to do and follow through on things. And that was probably the a huge catalyst, uh, something that I hope I never experience again in my life. I will be certainly doing my best to make sure that it doesn't happen. But sometimes in business stuff does happen and it's out of your control. And, you know, that's why I want to become a beacon, like you said, to try and attract as many good people, as I call them, into my world so I can do more business with them, you know, because I want to help those kind of people. If you have a look at my LinkedIn headline, it says, I want to help ambitious innovative and purpose-driven businesses. So it's like a call out. It's like, if you're out there, I want to help you get your message out. So it's had a good impact in the long run, but at that time, yeah, far from it. Oh my goodness. That would have, that would have been a process just to, to go through that and come out the other side and, and, and be okay. I'm sure that would have been rather traumatic I love that you are waving the flags for, for good people and doing good. I did notice one of your podcasts, uh, one of the episodes was about doing good through LinkedIn. Yeah. I think. Uh, yeah, you know, influence is a force for good, absolutely. Yeah. So one of the things, and that was with Leah Turner, who has, you know, 150,000 followers on LinkedIn, you know, a huge force. But what people don't recognise about her a lot is just how much she does behind the scenes that people don't see. And we were part of a fundraiser for when the Ukraine war started and we raised nearly 250,000 pounds by doing LinkedIn training and different things that happened as a consequence of that. Um, And it was really amazing to be a part of it. And that's when I recognized that there's more to just getting business. There's more when you build a community that is possible. And so it's been kind of an interesting year for me to grow into that. Something I always wanted, didn't necessarily think LinkedIn was the platform for that, but as it turns out, it is that and then more. It's so powerful, isn't it? So, okay, so I love, I I find, I tend to have in my world people that are doing good things in the world. So I don't know how that's happened, but luckily (laughs) I tend to have uh, purpose-driven entrepreneurs who are doing it because it comes from inside them, so they're doing something good and they're passionate. So there's that side. But the the other side to this podcast and what it's about is is lead generation and, and getting business. So let's dive into that. Would you like to explain what the power of LinkedIn is? 
Uh, look, I need to tell you that I fell in love with LinkedIn because I've worked in sales for nearly 20 years. So I'm a salesperson at heart. I'm not a marketer. Um, I fell in love with LinkedIn because here's what happened. I turned up at a job in a new industry and I was selling raw materials and ingredients into the beauty industry of all things. Uh, and so I turned up at the job and I said to them, okay, what do we sell? And they said, Michelle, that's your job. And I said, yeah, I understand. I'm in sales. Like it's my job to go out and manage the customers and all that kind of stuff. Then they said, no, 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 off you go. And I said, yeah, do I find it on the website? No, Michelle. Okay, let's go old school. Have you got a catalog? No, Michelle, it's your job. And I was like, let me just do the maths here. So I've got 80 clients spread around Australia at that time, 10,000 different ingredients. And you what expect me to do 30 customer visits a month, knock on the door and say, here's everything we sell. Like open up a magical bag and say, here's my bag of tricks. And this is a company that turned over a billion dollars US. When we're not talking like a small business, we're talking like a very, you know, 1200 employees. So not a small business at all. And so I said to my boss at the time who I just got the job through LinkedIn, I said to him, look, I can create some content over on this LinkedIn thing. Do you mind if I do that? You know, so I can just maybe reach more people, you know, without having to drive around in Sydney traffic. And he said, Michelle, how much does it cost? And I said, it's free. And when are you going to do it? I said, oh, don't worry. I'll just do it. You know, whenever I get a chance in amongst, you know, doing my real work. <laughs> and I started to do it. So I shared about the ingredients we sold. And then I realized if you just talk about product, product, product all the time, it gets pretty boring and repetitive. So I introduced things like what were the latest beauty trends coming through out of Europe or maybe out of the US, I'd seen some cool new products. And then I started to realize if you've got all this great content, but you don't have a community or an audience, you're talking to yourself. So then I discovered that actually on LinkedIn, as a salesperson, if you're just really polite and have a few manners and personalize your request, you can pretty much connect with anyone globally. And so I started to do that and I built up an amazing niche community globally in the beauty industry and ingredient space. And why I fell in love with it is because I just got more sales. Like I would, people would see my content and they would reach out, maybe not that same time, but they would reach out and say, saw your post. I want to know more about that. And it just kept happening. And then I'd go to trade shows, you know, the old school, let's all stand at a booth that we paid at a significant amount of money while everyone else walks around from about a three meter distance, just trying to see what you offer without getting too close before the sales <laughs> rep comes and gets you. Like it's shark and fish. Um, and it's such an uncomfortable thing for both sides. Even for me, I love, I'm an extrovert. I love meeting people, but the poor introverted people on the other side were just, leave me alone, salespeople. But I would have a lineup and my boss would be looking going, Michelle, what's going on here? And I go, and they would walk up and they'd say, I saw your post. And as a salesperson, I, I just, I was hooked, you know, hook, line and sinker. Um, so how you generate it is a combination of having a really strong LinkedIn profile which speaks to your ideal client. So lets them know how you solve their challenges is really optimized as well for things like keywords. And, you know, I don't want to get too technical, but there are some things that you can do to make sure you show up in searches. Then what I would recommend is that we build a community. So having relationships built with people that we find that, you know, you think might actually be interested in what you've got to offer. And then I personally think that creating content is really powerful as well because it shows what you know, it shows that you offer value and it shows that you can help people. Uh, and so a combination of those things for me is the beginning of the process where you nurture those people, nurture them with the content and then leads come. It's my favorite topic ever. <laughs> and so you had the line at, at this event and it's because they recognized you they knew you yeah. so they didn't feel all that fear and intimidation that oh, hey, I know you <laughs> yeah and it gave them a reason to come over right so quite often when you go to trade shows there's a bucket of mints or something equivalent sitting on top of you know the front of the counter at the at the stand and that's to try and entice people to come or there's lots of gimmicky giveaways but what I found is that they would come over with the intention of finding out something to do with business and it was 
actually really surprising. And even to this day, I've been doing it for around eight years now and a hundred percent of my business is generated from leads on LinkedIn. I am still blown away at the amount of time it can often take between when someone sees something and when they actually reach out. And we know that the stats are roughly at any given time, only maximum 5% of your audience is ready to buy. So that leaves 95% that you're nurturing, waiting for that moment when things change and they're ready to reach out and buy something. So um, it's really something I'm still as I'm probably more in love with it now than what I was back then because I kind of know what I'm doing. <laughs> Whereas back then I was just, I'll try this, I'll try that. Uh, so yeah, it's a lot faster now to turn things around. So uh, you've told me that you specialize in pages. So I need you to tell me about that because to be honest, when I think of the power of LinkedIn, I think of person to person. I, I think of it like a online networking where you can actually target people, which is amazing, and you can actually talk business without it being skeezy or unexpected. <laughs> so but what's the power of business pages? I, I don't know as much about, well, I've got lots to learn with LinkedIn in general, but I don't know much about pages. Tell me about that. Look, and you're not alone, right? You're probably sitting in the majority. 95% of people probably share similar views because pages up until even two years ago were pretty uncool, like, you know, because they were just broadcast. They were, here's our company report. Here's our company product, 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 you know, and it would be like an ad. And what do we do on social media, especially on LinkedIn? We just scroll on by. It's so easy. Just keep on scrolling. Um, and so that's what happened with company pages. People would see it. It looked like an ad. It was all about them. And it was like, yuck, just keep scrolling. Let's find someone that I like. And so what's happened in that time is obviously we had COVID, uh, that drove a lot of businesses onto LinkedIn. They brought their ad spend with them, which meant LinkedIn now has a lot of money to be able to invest back into pages to make them more usable. And so what we've seen over the last two years, to give you an idea, they used to have a couple of people in the team. I think it's now up to about 35. Uh, so it's huge amount of focus, huge amount of growth. We've got lots of tools that make them much more user-friendly, things that are coming through on that side. But LinkedIn changed. You know, when we all went into lockdown globally, when travel stopped, when customer visits stopped, everyone came to LinkedIn as a way of reaching each other, connecting with each other. And so what we see, how pages work in with that. When I've worked in sales, I can, and I'm a pretty good salesperson, just putting it out there. Um, I know <laughs> that I'm good at what I do. My mum would say I sell ice to Eskimos and that's probably a fair, fair assessment. But what would happen is I couldn't outsell a bad reputation for a company. So if it came down to a decision where there's two companies sell pretty much the same product, no matter how much people liked me, if the rest of the business fell over, I lost the sale. And so this is what I say to people. What I want you to look at LinkedIn now, build a really strong company brand, which helps support the personal brands, like you just said, so that they can have conversations, that they can actually do that human to human interaction, but help amplify their voices and vice versa. So the employees can help the company, the company can help the employees and you grow faster, which is why we're starting to look at it now. Now it's literally only the last two years that this has been a conversation that I started. And when I started, people would literally almost laugh at me and go, Michelle, pages are a waste of time. What are you doing? And I'm like, no, 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 stick with me. I can see what's going on. Like, and they're like, mm-hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, and I was like, no, no, no. And secretly on the inside going, God, I hope I'm right. Um, <laughs> as it, as it turns out, fast forward and we've definitely seen an evolution. So, um, but yeah, they, they have changed is the, you know, and I think people need to go back with a fresh set of eyes and not look at if I embrace company pages, I have to ignore my personal stuff. No, no, no keep that working, but then use this to make it even better. Okay. So, so the pay, the page is for the business reputation and, and I guess, and then the personal is still for the networking. Would that be? 
Correct. Yeah, absolutely. And the other thing that you look at, so I've got roughly 10,000 followers, a little bit over on my personal side of things. And my company page has roughly 2000. Now on paper, when you look at those numbers, you would go, Michelle, that 10,000 is much higher. That's better. It's five times as much. But if you actually listen to the story that I just shared, you realize that it come from a completely different industry. So I built most of my community around the beauty industry and chemical distribution which is where I worked and got started. So roughly half of that 10,000 are almost completely unrelated to what I do now. And so, but if you go to my company page, you don't follow a company page on company pages unless there's some level of interest. And so it's a much more concentrated pool of people that I can work with. Um, But again, it's always using, you know, both of them in in synergy with each other. Do you tend to post the same thing in both both places? Um, I don't, but here's the tip. The type of content that works on company pages is almost identical to what you see on personal pages. So I teach my clients when they're doing content for their company page, I almost want it when you're scrolling, you can't tell the difference. So you are not put off because it's heavily branded, highly polished. I I kind of irritate a lot of marketing teams who are in charge of like branding and corporate, you know, making sure it stays within the guidelines because I'm like, the more you do that, the more it looks like an ad, the more people scroll. Uh, And that's not what we want. So we bring the human side of the business. So number one type of content, that works on company pages and I manage them across all kinds of industries is any kind of photo that you take with a smartphone of any employee doing anything. And the more candid, the better. (laughs) Um, It does not matter if they're sitting in the lunchroom cutting a birthday cake. It does not matter whether it's someone in the warehouse packing an order. It doesn't matter if you're out having coffee or speaking at an event, hands down, every single time that is the highest performing content on a company page. And I would encourage businesses to incorporate part of that as part of their content. Mm -hmm. People like to see something real and and relatable. Yeah. And also we want to see, you know, who's behind the curtain, you know, often in businesses when we're very transactional, it's email to email, nobody picks up a phone even really that much these days. And so when you get to see, oh, is that what that person looks like? I never imagined them to be like that. Oh, actually you care about your workers. I, you know, I, I want to see, you know, that people enjoy where they work. And so it can create impressions maybe for potential employees coming through. So that's one way that pages can really help you attract better talent. Um, but it can also be that customers or suppliers get to see, actually this company shares my values. You know, they look after their people. It looks like people are having fun um, and just to be a part of it. So, you know, it's not all play. If we just do that, what happens is it just, it's social, right? And it's fun and it, it gets the most likes and comments and engagement, but we don't just want to be friends with people. You know, we're following companies because they solve a problem. So it's equally important to show off your knowledge, you know, what's going on in your industry and create valuable content that as a business, if you've got lots of employees, you've probably got access to more information than the average person on the street that's not from within the industry. So share what you know. So recent example of that might be for people that supply products. There's lots of shipping delays around the world. There's lots of price increases going on for all kinds of reasons ask people, let them know this is what's going on. And then, you know, maybe they need to put their orders further out in advance, or maybe they should, you know, look for backup sources or different things. So, you know, just add value in a way that shares your knowledge, but helps the person on the other side, not me, 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 me. (laughs) Uh, So do you manage, because you just used the word manage and it, it reminded me of something you said towards the beginning, uh, so do you manage as well as train? Is that what you do? You do both? Yeah. So for when I first started out in my business, I was doing a hundred percent company page management. So people would pay me to run their page, run their community, uh, create content for them. And I started off doing all of that, which is how I got so good at understanding how they work. Cause it was across so many different types of companies. As time went on, and I guess I evolved and grew as did my reputation and how much I was, you know, really 
getting to know about company pages. Um, and I would say writing business gold, the world's first book on company pages with uh, a friend of mine that then cemented my position as someone that was more an expert status, which is then when I started to focus more on training and strategy sessions. So I still have a small number of clients that I work with. I'm pretty hand selecting those, uh, to make sure, cause it's, not something that it's just about creating a couple of posts, like that's a content writer. Um, but for me, we work on a lot more strategy, higher end. And yeah, so I do it, but limited these days and more focused on training because I love having an impact. I love being able to go to a business, teach people and then see that in action. Um, it's still one of my favorite things. And I imagine uh, there, there'd be an importance in optimizing your page to for people that just might want to check it out and find out about business. So do you have yeah, anything and to... I- it's about creating an impression, right? So what is the impression that you want to create for people? And often if you're a small business, the first concern that comes up is how do I keep up with everything? How do I manage creating content over on my personal profile and on a company page? Effectively, we're doubling up. Um, so there's a couple of things that we can do, which I'd love to share a tip if, um, you know, that will help people. Number one, LinkedIn tells us if you set up your page hundred percent complete, so fill in all of the boxes, you get up to 30% more impressions, right? On a weekly basis. Often when people set up their page, it was the fastest way that they could do it just so that they could go and update a work experience and have the little logo show on their profiles, which is the, you know, cool, but there's just so much more that we can do. So if you ever Google a business name and I encourage people to try this, you'll actually find the company page on LinkedIn shows up in that first probably five or six results. And so for small businesses, that's a huge opportunity because SEOs, what, two and a half thousand, three thousand 3,000 a month for most businesses. If you can't afford that, piggyback off LinkedIn's reputation and get on that first page of results for your business name. So how do you deal with the content double up? I call it, look at it as your company page is your greatest hits library. So if you have a post that works good over on your personal profile, give it a bit of time and then go and put it on the company page. Don't do them on the same time and don't press the share button. The share button will kill it. It just Uh goes nowhere. It shouldn't, but that's how it works. (laughs) That's that's just what happens. Uh, We're hoping that things will change, but for now, that's how it works. So ultimately what we want to say to people, think of your top frequently asked questions Mm -hmm. think about what are the things that are going on in your industry and then throw in some of that employee and personal side of your business as well. So we spoke about good businesses, um, purpose driven businesses. If you're out in the community making a difference as part of you, you know, your business, don't forget to share about that as well. And it's not just because you want a virtue signal and say, look how good I am. It's a genuine part of your brand and it's social proof that backs that up. So uh, running out of time, is there anything that you would like to cover off that we haven't before we wrap up? Look, I think the most important thing that I'd love to cover off is just to tell people if you tried company pages a couple of years ago and they fell flat and you're like, what is the point of this? I get it. And what I'm here to say is things like LinkedIn lives and LinkedIn newsletters that are coming through pages are really getting traction right now. And they're a great tool, especially if you don't have your own email list, um, set up over on different platforms, which I didn't have. I'm literally setting it up as we speak. Um, but there's some cool ways that you can build a community and that's everything that's going on with LinkedIn right now is how do we have more conversations? How do we build collaborations and how do we have community? And, you know, if that sounds like it's good to you, then company pages are a part of that. Combine it with what you're doing personally. And that's a winning strategy. Fantastic. And how can people reach you? Well, no surprises, but you're going to find me on LinkedIn pretty much 24 seven. Uh, some may say if there was more hours in a day, I'd still be there. Uh, <laughs> but obviously Michelle J Raymond. And the reason I have J is because there's about 30,000 Michelle Raymond's in the world. Uh, so look for Michelle J Raymond or my company page is good trading co. So if you want to learn how you can get the most out of company pages, then I share lots of tips and tricks. And I also have a weekly LinkedIn live where I get experts from around the world to share 
their expertise on how you two can grow on LinkedIn. So uh, yeah, but pretty much that's where you can find me. Fantastic. And what does J stand for? Jennifer. Jennifer. So, <laughs> so the Jennifer is, I was named after the midwife who happened to be my auntie at the time. <laughs> Well, she earned it by the sounds of it. <laughs> I know. It's it's just like one of those things I think I've got the world's longest name, but no, when it, it's about being <laughs> unique on LinkedIn. You know, you've got to find the ways that you stand out in a crowded, you know, kind of place. I've met a couple of the other Michelle Raymonds on LinkedIn around the place, um, and so it's kind of funny when you go into a room. It happened on Clubhouse. All of a sudden it was like, there's a Michelle Raymond in here. It's kind of just weird. <laughs> My uh, oh, well, my name's Olivia D'Souza Ferris, and people's brain explodes when they see the hyphenated name. But that's not including <laughs> my middle name of names. But my mum is uh, Maria Gabriella Garashingle. There's never the Souza. So you know, be a be a <laughs> be a European name. <laughs> She wins hands down. Uh, she gets the prize for sure. But it's the, it's one of those things where, you know, in if you look at it, we're nearly up to I think it's about 850 million people on LinkedIn right now. So what are the things that distinguish you from other people? And, you know, my advice is just build your digital twin. You're already unique. Don't try and create a LinkedIn version of yourself. Just be you. Um, that's all that the platform requires. So a lot of people don't put them themselves out there because they're just freaking out that people will judge them, that what they've got to say is an original, that it's all been said before. Uh, so what I would say is it hasn't been said by you and your experiences, your you know personality uh, and your vision for where you want to be in the future. So please yeah. jump on board yeah. and share your voice. That's, I mean, that's a total tip for life that applies to podcasting and basically everything. Just be you and, be, yeah, deliver it in your voice. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today. It is my absolute pleasure. I appreciate you asking me. Thanks, Michelle. So what were your key takeaways from today? Did it raise any questions? What would you like to know more about? Let me know. You can contact me via social media or email or join my free Facebook community, Magnetic Pod. I don't care which way you use, just reach out to me. I'd love to chat with you. And remember, you can get access to lots of free podcast resources that will help you get started or help you improve your podcast at livymusicmedia.com forward slash freebies. Hit subscribe because I want to see you again. But for now, go forth, be the awesome person you are, live the life you want to live and have fun. You've got this. See you next time. Hello, it's Libby here. Have you ever wondered about what the key elements are that make a podcast truly stand out? Or maybe you're thinking about starting your own special podcast and feel a bit overwhelmed and don't know where to start. Well, I have something for you. Introducing the ultimate podcast checklist. Da, 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 da. It's a step-by-step -step guide that covers everything from the initial brainstorming to advanced growth strategies. It's the perfect companion for both new and seasoned podcasters. And the best part, it's absolutely free. Da, 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 da. <laughs> to grab your copy, simply head to the show notes of this episode and you will find a direct link there and then away you go. Remember, every podcast started with that initial spark and the right resource. So let the ultimate podcasting checklist be yours.